As I'm sitting down to make this video today, it's been just over 12 hours since Apple released iOS 18.1 in developer beta. Now the iOS 18 developer beta has been rolling out for a number of weeks now. The big difference with this particular version is that this is the first version to include Apple intelligence, which as I'm sure you're aware, but just in case you're not, this is Apple's take on artificial intelligence. So this is a pretty major update to their software. And this is a really interesting preview of what people can expect on their devices later on this year. Now, I don't normally make videos like this. I typically wait and do full product tutorials and deep dives and tips and tricks. And those kind of videos will continue. But with this being such a major change of direction for Apple, I thought it would be worth taking just a bit of time today to sit down and show you guys what you can expect when you either download the developer beta for yourself, or if you decide to wait until 18.1 becomes available to the public in around October of this year. A few things to note before we get too far into the video. There is a pretty strict set of requirements and you need to hit all of them before you can actually get involved with the developer beta. The first is that you need to be signed up for the developer beta program. And the way that you would do that, you go to Safari, you type in developer.apple.com and you register for the program over there. Once you've done that, you'll be able to go into settings and general and software updates, and you'll be able to enlist your devices in the developer beta. You need a device that is compatible, and this is a pretty controversial topic. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but essentially for iOS 18.1, you will need to be running this on an iPhone 15 Pro or an iPhone 15 Pro Max. If you have anything older than those devices, the option to download the 18.1 beta won't even show for you at the moment, so don't even bother looking for it. The other thing is that you need to be using this on a US account. And what I mean by that is if I go into my settings and if I go to the top here, you can see there is now an option called Apple Intelligence and Siri. And if I tap into this, you can see that my language is currently set as English United States. Clearly for me, that would normally be set as English United Kingdom. I've changed this to United States in order to uh, access the developer beta. Also, if I go all the way back to the main page of settings and go into general and then scroll down and go to language and region, you can also see that I've had to change this to United States in here as well. It won't be available to users in China or the European Union at this moment in time. I don't know how that works. If you are in those regions, whether you can just change your settings the way that I've just done now or whether your Apple ID uh, or, you know, location systems on your phone will stop you from being able to do that. Let me know in the comments uh, if you were in one of those affected regions and you've been able to get this to work. When you do this for the first time, you will need to join a waiting list. My experience doing this last night was I was waiting in the waiting list for a matter of minutes. I think this will probably be more relevant uh, when this rolls out to the general public. Apple understandably want to reduce the strain on servers and that kind of thing. You're going to toggle Apple Intelligence on using this option up here at the top. And then once you've done that, essentially Apple Intelligence is then running on your device. So with that done, what can you actually do on the current version of Apple Intelligence? Because you can't do everything. So let's take a look. So I think the first thing that people are going to want to see on the latest version of uh, Apple Intelligence is the new Siri. And the disappointing thing here is that it essentially doesn't exist. It exists in terms of how it looks, but it does not exist in terms of how it functions. So the first major difference that you're gonna notice is if I access it, you can see a completely new uh, animation for accessing Siri on the new device. It kind of whooshes across the screen with this kind of multicolored rainbow effect over the top. And then you can see that it kind of pulses around the outside while it's listening to me talk. So the other thing that you can see as well is if I double tap right down at the bottom of the screen, there is now a type to Siri option that appears as well. So if you're ever in a situation where you would prefer to type in your request rather than speaking it out loud, you can do that. You just double tap at the bottom, the Siri menu will appear. So I can say weather tomorrow, Manchester, for example, and you can see that it will give me the results. 
that's kind of all you can do in the current version of Siri compared to what you could previously do. So this is still the brains of the old Siri with the looks of the new one. I did see someone mention that it understands context better now in terms of follow-up questions. That has not been my experience so far. What's the weather going to be like in Manchester tomorrow? Looks like it will be cloudy in Manchester tomorrow. Will I need an umbrella? I don't believe it's raining. So you can see there, uh, the context of that conversation really should have been that it realised that we were still talking about the weather, we were still talking about tomorrow, we were still talking about Manchester. Um, Siri on my device took me back to uh, my location and today. So at the moment that would appear to not be working. All right, so here we have a note that I've written with some fake uh, interview notes from a candidate. So this is to try and give you an example of what I think would be a kind of real world example of how people might use this. So I've selected all of the rough notes that were taken in the interview. And if I then tap on the Apple Intelligence logo that you can see just above the keyboard, you can see that we have a number of writing tools options. So we can have this proofread, we can rewrite it uh, or have the artificial intelligence rewrite it. And this can be done in a friendly, professional or a concise manner. We can then have it create a summary for me, give me the key points, turn it into a list or a table. So if I take a look at some of these, if we choose key points, you can see that I can look at the key points down at the bottom and I can then choose replace if I want to and it will literally replace the previous information with this. If I go back, uh, I'll choose summary this time. And you can see it gives me a summary in just a couple of lines. If I choose list, and you can see it's bulleted everything for me, but it hasn't just bulleted, you know, individual points. It's gone through and it's actually read the information and then created um, sort of sensible bullet points there essentially. And I'll try table. I don't know if this is going to work with table, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so table, not so good at the moment. I guess you're always going to have kind of mixed results with this kind of thing. What's impressive about this, keep in mind with everything related to Apple intelligence, this is all being done on device. So none of this is being sent to the cloud. This is all happening within the iPhone 15 Pro in this example. Okay, so let me show you another example in relation to writing tools. So this time we've jumped to mail and that's an important point to make when it comes to writing tools in Apple Intelligence. I showed you the notes app, but that's just because it was the first place that I thought of to go. Anywhere that you have a flashing text cursor in your iPhone now, um, Apple Intelligence will be available. So, you know, this is me jumping into mail. It will work exactly the same way here that it did in notes. It would work the same way in WhatsApp, Messages, X, Safari, whatever you like. So uh, here we have a email that I'm about to send out to my team. And as you can see, this email was written in the heat of the moment. It's a pretty heated email. Uh, it's probably not the kind of thing that I want to send out to my team. So what I'm going to do is select all of this text. And again, I can access writing tools. They sometimes appear just above the keyboard. I can go to the contextual menu up here, choose writing tools, and it works exactly the same way. And what I'm gonna do is change this to a friendly email. And you can see that it will go through my somewhat aggressive email before, and it rewrites it in a much more friendly way. I'm not actually happy with that. I'm gonna go back to revert, and I think professional would be kind of a good middle ground uh, you know, for this particular request. And there we go. And what I can do is I can say done. And that's my email that's been completely changed for me. Let's come out of that and we'll go into my inbox. And let me show you something else that is relevant to Apple intelligence and mail. And that's the fact that you now have a priority option sitting at the top of your inbox. And this will show me emails that the uh, device believes are important. So I've had additional emails beyond these, um, but my phone is essentially telling me that it thinks that these are the most important emails that I need to focus on. So what I'm gonna do is tap into this uh, collaboration opportunity email here. And you can see that somebody 
has reached out to me and they are asking to collaborate on a YouTube video. But this is a really lengthy email. Uh, there's a lot of fluff in here. I don't really have the time to sit and work through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap this summarize button up at the top and my phone is going to give me a small paragraph, a short paragraph, giving me all the information that I need. I can quickly scan through this paragraph and I've got an idea of what this um, email is all about. I can also tap reply and reply again and You can see just above the keyboard here that we have a couple of um, sort of immediate responses that I can send. So I think on this occasion, not really interested in this one. There we go. So my phone has essentially written uh, an email for me. I can just hit send and get that sent straight off. Okay, something else that has come with 18.1 in relation to Apple intelligence is if I go into settings and then go into focus, you can see that we now have a new focus mode called reduce interruptions. And if I tap into this, you can see that this will intelligently allow only the important notifications to interrupt you and silence notifications determined not to be important. So it's essentially the same technology that we just saw in the mail app, but this is being used on a much wider scale. And I think this is going to be something that uh, when people are working, for example, this is probably going to be most people's go to. Um, I've spent, you know, a huge amount of time creating focus modes on my phone. I've written tutorials about how to do it. It is overly convoluted for what is essentially something that should just be able to figure out what to allow through and what not. So this looks like it will be um, pretty useful. Haven't had a chance to really experience this yet, but this is something that's going to be really interesting. Something else that is new in the notes app is the ability to click on this little paperclip icon and then choose record audio. Okay, candidate notes from the meeting that I just had. It was with John Smith. He's got six years of credit control at DEF Incorporated, uh, a bachelor's of finance from the University of Anywhere. He knows Sage and QuickBooks. Um, he's experienced in debt recovery, credit assessment, AR, risk management, financial reporting. He's really meticulous got really strong communication skills, very analytical, team-oriented, very dependable. He's leaving his job at the moment because of career advancement and wanting new challenges, and he's very proactive, got good negotiation skills, but he is sometimes a bit too detail-focused. Okay, and I'm going to tap Done. And we can see very quickly here in the notes, if I uh, tap here where it says Preview, we have a summary up at the top, which I can tap into. And that has taken the pretty long note that I just recorded and already given me an AI generated summary of that. But if I go back, I can then see all of the notes that I spoke out here as well. So if you're someone that likes to take your phone out on walks, for example, and, you know, make use of audio recordings to get your thoughts down, I think this is going to be a really interesting feature for you. Okay, and the final thing that I wanted to show you uh, with regards to Apple Intelligence in iOS 18.1 is in Safari. So here I've got a Safari article open. I'm going to tap the button in the bottom left uh, of the address bar and you can see that we have the ability to listen to page, which we would normally have in iOS 17. We also have the ability to access Reader View, which I'm going to tap on. The new feature here is this summarize button up at the top. If I tap on this, you can see that it will review the article and give me a quick summary of it. Um, I love this. This is a feature that I've wanted for a really long time now. I've used third party apps to do this in the past. I think staying up to date with news is really difficult, especially when there is so much out there. So the idea of being able to very quickly jump through different articles and get um, you know, summaries like this is going to be really useful. So after 12 hours of being able to um, have a bit of a play around with this, and that isn't actually the case, it was downloaded to my device at about 9 p.m. last night, and it feels underwhelming at this stage for me personally. But honestly, I kind of think that that's how artificial intelligence is when you get beyond the really glossy stuff that companies like OpenAI shows you, when you actually sit down and think about how artificial intelligence is going to work for you in your daily lives it is quite boring it is quite unexciting 
but there it is. We have access to it. If you want to download this for yourself, you now know how to do that. As ever, I would recommend that you don't do this on your daily driver phone. It is buggy. It is glitchy. It's crashed on me multiple times already. Um, so put this on a backup if you're able to. So like I said, a unusual video for me, not my usual style. And I will be returning to tutorials and deep dives for the next set of videos. But I just wanted to share my initial experiences and thoughts on this with you. Let me know if you've had any similar experiences. Drop me a comment and let me know what you think. And I'll see you on the next video.